taking a critical look at the gaming news of the week. This is Augmented Reality, presented by the Triple S League. It's crazy how fast things change sometimes. Welcome to the Augmented Reality Podcast, your source for news, leaks, and insights about games in the gaming industry. It is uh, August 7th, 2019. This is the Wednesday edition of the show. My name is Ashen Unity. I'm here as always with Cybsidian, and boy, do we have a lot to talk about today. Pardon me as I, pardon me as I plug my uh, my headphones back in. It's got a detachable cable on the headphone huh. part, and and sometimes it catches on my chair and just yanks right out. But anyway, how you doing today, Cyb? Uh, it is it is a it is a heavy, crazy news day. Oh my goodness! It is absolutely. Yeah. If you are on our Discord server or Twitter or you know breathe oxygen, you're probably aware of the situation that's going down with Sup Matto right now, YouTuber Sup Matto, who is a prolific border, or was a prolific Borderlands three um, uh, YouTuber. And uh, wow, looks like we've got quite a delay on YouTube right now. Anyway. Um, so we've been talking about this story for uh, over a week now. Uh, in podcast 151, you know, we, we described the situation to the limit we could. We didn't name Sup Matto because, you know, for his own protection mostly, also for our own protection, because the people that showed up at his house asked about us. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was consulting with lawyers and stuff, and so he asked us to hold off on sharing anything more. And then uh, we didn't talk about it again until a week later, podcast 153, where basically he was riding off into the sunset, leaving YouTube behind, and we felt that that was the end of the story, because he had decided he wasn't going to take action or make it public, and of course, you know, we basically had to respect that decision, so we were basically ready to bid farewell. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, yesterday, he posts a statement on his channel describing uh, I don't know if it's the whole situation, but most of the relevant details were in there. And uh, Terika Winnegan in the chat. I predict, th- no, Time Bean, I predict three to four cyber ants. <laughs> Terika Winnegan just says, hey, everyone. Hey. Uh, yeah, so uh, there's there's a lot to talk about here. We do have cyberpunk news that we're going to discuss uh, good, good later Good cyberpunk the show. news today. Um, yeah, absolutely. All, some great stuff. All cyberpunk news is good. It, it really, really is because we have... Um, we have an amazing team over there, and they are working very hard on bringing to the gaming world one of the best, the very best games that we will see in a very, very, very long time. And they do so while respecting their true fans and the true community, um, not by coddling them, not by sucking up to them, not by blowing smoke, not by doing any of that stuff. But I, I don't even know where that term comes from. But by doing things that they love... And working on a good product, which is astounding. That what do you this know? Is the, you know what? What do you know? It's it's fascinating that this this is how this works. Um, mm. And I've got to say that overall, I'm I'm really happy with how you know they they really stand up head and shoulders above this kind of stuff because this is not the first time that you know that these companies have done these these other companies have done and pulled this kind of stuff before. They have sent investigators and muscle men to, to somebody's house. And I see a lot of people who, who go, what are you talking about? You know, relax, you know, it's not, it's not that bad. It's like, you know, it's like, I don't think you understand what, you know, this is somebody who's never been in the situation where you have muscle men show up at your door and start to, um, you know, make it make it very clear that you know that they're they're there. Um, when they when they show up at your like at your significant other's workplace or your parents' house, or when they start to uh, you know you you run out of gas or your car dies on a on a road and they're suddenly just there going, hey, do you need a boost? It's they're sending you a message, and that that you're not safe anywhere. They can get to you at any time at any place. And when they start pulling this stuff, now that these things were just examples, they weren't what happened here in this particular case. Yeah, well, but we will describe when, exactly when you, what happened with Submato in in just a minute here, but I'll let Side mm-hmm. finish up. But it, it's just it's just the, the beginning of this whole thing, and what they've done in the past, and what they continue to do, and 
you know, I, I raised this point this morning, uh, this afternoon on uh, on Twitter. Um, when the whole thing about you know uh, Randy with the with the whole uh, well, he was prong accused of some, content. some nefarious things. Yeah, he was he was confused. Not just nefarious, like downright, like highly illegal, ends you up in jail for many many years. Like especially financial stuff. Like, like and, and that's so funny, right? Like you can you can commit a lot of crimes and get 10 years or less in jail really bad crimes that that leave just destroyed people in the wake you commit a financial crime <laughs> against uh like a big corporation you'll end up in jail for 200 years it's like oh okay i see where the priorities are you know um but we defended randy uh when that stuff came out we said what did we say we said let the evidence speak and let's assume innocence before assuming guilty. And today, all day long, all day from, from you know, whether it's from the, the comp said companies, whether it's from uh, said rabid fans, it's like, no, sup and you guys and other people that are, you know, bringing this to attention, you're all guilty of something. It's like, well, what guilty thing are we guilty of? Oh, guilty of doing stuff like data mining uh, a game that isn't out yet and you don't have access to the files. So that's not data. You can't data yeah. mine something that you don't have. There, there have been some of those. There have been some that are that are like, well, of course, Submat was, must be guilty of something. But I do want to point out that the majority of the community seems to be going the other way. That's what we've seen in comments on our channel, on our Discord, and on Twitter. Now, Saib has been more involved in the Twitter today than I have, and there definitely are a lot of people saying, you know, either, you know, to take two must be in the right, or they just don't care. They're going to buy the game anyway because they want Borderlands, and that's fine. I mean, um, yeah, no, no, whatever and, they want to do, you know. And and by the way, that's in reference to uh, the the hashtag boycott Borderlands three started trending this morning, and it just mm -hmm. went crazy. It so. Matto released his statement yesterday. Some YouTubers, some larger YouTubers than us, started picking up the story shortly after that. Some more YouTubers did this morning, and basically the internet exploded. And, uh, you know, Boycott Borderlands 3 hashtag was, was trending on Twitter this morning. And so there, there's going to be a lot coming out of this over the next few days, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But we might as well get into exactly what happened, unless you had some another point you needed to make right there well okay do do what happened but but i mean we've already kind of gone over what's happened once or twice so if you just well go i'll, I'll do quickly. it quickly but we haven't like we haven't been able to discuss the details of of what ha so i'll just i'll just give you a basic well, there's, timeline. there's there's a lot of details that we still shouldn't talk about so. right well i won't i won't go beyond what matto said in his video but basically um so on uh where is it here July 25th, investigators hired by Take-Two Interactive show up at Submato's home to question him. During this interaction, they asked about us, the Triple S League, and they also asked him a bunch of questions about how he got certain information and screenshots uh, that, were, that he had put and shared in one of his videos about Borderlands 3. Now, we will get into what exactly that was that, that he showed in a minute. Shortly after the investigators left uh matto's discord server was taken down and it was taken down uh the message he got was you know because it was involved in uh, selling or sharing cracked or stolen game keys or something to that effect can't remember the exact wording but we he we we don't know with 100 percent certainty that take two was behind his discord server going down but it's i mean it's pr gonna be pretty bizarre if it wasn't and by the way um, we've we've heard from people who were part of Matto's Discord, and they've said that stuff was absolutely not going on there. We were on Matto's Discord. We didn't see any of that, so it's it's also let me let me just quickly explain that too because th there's been a little bit of that in the news recently that there's been um, you know stolen keys and reselling and and that kind of stuff and and how you know that hurts developers etc etc etc. It's very very valid. Absolutely very valid, and it's a very valid concern, and people who sell, sell stolen keys bought with, or sell keys with 
be, having been bought or paid for with stolen credit card information, those people are absolute scum, and that's terrible. Um, that said, it takes a lot of effort to do that kind of a thing. We're talking dozens and dozens of, of people working for about a dollar an hour in, like, probably, like, pretty terrible countries, basically working with, um, you know, they're, they're trying hundreds of stolen credit cards and most of them have been deactivated and every time they do they got to reroute a new a new ip they got to do all this stuff it's 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 a terrible industry that takes advantage of people that they're stealing from people they're buying from and people that are working for them or being forced to work for them um that is a, a job that only pays generally worthwhile money if if you have an enormous force to do that with the 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 argument that that this is what he was doing is i i have no direct evidence for or against and nobody else does either um but the 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 effort that you would have to go through to do that is ridiculous mm -hmm. is intense and is incredibly time consuming this guy's got a job and is going to to um He's going to university, he, and he runs a YouTube channel. I don't know how many people have tried to juggle those three things in their life. Um, I work around 120 hours a week. Basically, I have time to sleep sometimes four to four to six hours a day, and that's that's it. That that's basically it. It's in, um, it's nuts. It's nuts around here. When when Saab goes back to work, he works seasonal work. Um, it there's a lot more that gets put on me let's put it that way but no you're absolutely right i mean all all of those together the youtube channel you know he's I, working work, on... I work contract work it's not seasonal it's contract most well anyway um yeah, anyway so i don't want to and please don't get into that but um um yeah it's it's basically that argument is preposterous and ridiculous mm -hmm. the one thing that i can say that they shared a lot on that twi on that discord is um, the the codes, the item codes, that Randy himself tweets out constantly. And they, yeah. they have a little list where they like, hey, th this is a code that was put out. And th these are codes for, for anybody who owns a copy of these games to just type in and they get something free. So yeah, and but yeah, they were giving this stuff away. This was part of this is all part of you know Borderlands Three promotional stuff. But here, let me you know make this disclaimer: if there's evidence or proof that Submato was involved in anything illegal or highly unethical or something that violated you know the terms of service of or of his Discord or anything of that nature, if he's guilty of the things he's being accused of, we will disavow. And we will mm -hmm. we will criticize it, and we will feel very betrayed because you know we we have worked with him and you know consider consider him to be on the up and up and one of the good ones, and so uh, you know, but we're we're at we take the same stance as Sib said that we took with Randy Pitchford when he was being accused of stuff, innocence until proven guilty, and right now the case being made against him is not very. Uh, robust it, it completely falls apart we'll we'll explain why watership down fan uh had some interesting comments in the chat was randy involved in this stuff we don't know uh one way or the other about whether or not this had anything to do with randy pitchford uh, all of the all of the attacks against submato have come from take two also um uh, watership down fan says i recommend you guys not talk to keemstar about the stuff um well, I, I actually um, saw somebody let, tweeted it, at Keemstar earlier today, so that, that should yeah, be saved. Uh, I, I, I tweeted at Kim, Keemstar today, too. Uh, Keemstar, much like many of the other um, Joker types, and, and I use that term um, not in uh, not in disrespect and not tied to more current day. I mean, I've been around for a couple hundred years, so I mean it more as in the term from like the Middle Ages. Your jokers, your court gesture, jesters, they're a barometer for how sane and how balanced things are. Um, and the more crazy-ish type acting person, you know, somebody with a lot of bravado, a lot of, you know, talking 
in in broad um, descript, descriptive uh, themes instead of like actually you know talking in plain English. Um, the more those people have a pull on society, the more you know your society is close to the edge. Um, the more you have to be aware that there's things going on that need to be rectified. When when everybody is listening to the clown in the room, and again, I don't mean that in a disrespectful term. I mean like a, like the entertainer, the cl the not the entertainer, the clown who mocks, who points out faults, that points out um, the the stupidity of situations, the the insanity of the current system. When you, when those are your most popular people, and when those people are doing really 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 well, you need to shut up and listen. Mm -hmm. because they're pointing out things in society whether they know it or not directly a lot of this stuff is is something that they just feel and they just kind of roll with it they th that's that's who they are that's part of the, the facet so those people are very important and so you don't don't discount them but of course they're not exactly you know you don't exactly trust them with your kids either right so so yes no we understand we understand who these people are but we also understand the importance that they play within a society so um just to kind of reason that because i do if you follow our twitter you'll notice that i follow a bunch of people and sometimes you go why are they following that person it's because i'm following a barometer right i'm i'm hmm. you know the weatherman tells you it's going to rain it's not the weatherman's fault that it's raining he's just the person who's telling you that it's raining and if you want to know what's going on if you want to have your thumb on a proper pulse you take the time to listen to the weatherman because that's the way things work and i myself do work that is considered to be weatherman-esque basically so mm. you know please please bear that in mind so okay Anyways. so let's Continue. get back into this timeline of events here so july 25th we had these investigators show up at, at something Adam's home and that's also the day that his Discord server got taken down. July 26th, seven copyright strikes are applied to Submato's YouTube channel by Take Two. Uh, this includes a, a video that we were in. We did an interview with him, or Sybe did anyway, about a Borderlands mm -hmm. 3 leak. Submato informed us about what was going on that day, July 26th. The next day uh, on our podcast, July 27th, we... We discussed the situation a little bit without naming Supmato, as I mentioned earlier. And then July 29th, two days later, Supmato's Twitter account vanished. Now, we assumed it had been taken down, like the Discord server, but it was later later revealed that Matto actually took it down himself. Uh, he thought it would be helpful to do that. Um, that it would... I, I, think, I think it had the opposite effect he was intending. Uh, I think it fueled more questions than... Uh, <laughs> then it stifled but anyway his twitter his twitter vanished and subsequently actually we uh we've been very limited in our ability to communicate with him because of all this stuff going down but um he had made a secondary discord account and uh on august 2nd he told us that he was expecting his youtube channel to go down because of the copyright strikes and that his decision was to uh leave youtube and just kind of let it go and follow other pursuits. We have, you know, he's got other things going on. And uh, so so we were prepared to just kind of bid him farewell, farewell and help him, you know, wish him luck in his future endeavors. But then suddenly yesterday, August 6th, uh, he posted a public statement on his YouTube channel about the situation. Other YouTubers began to cover it. And the rest is history. This morning, Boycott Borderlands 3 starts trending. Now, let's talk about what, what Sup Meadow actually shared that triggered this whole situation and what, uh, what Take Two is now accusing him of. Because they've responded, and we're going to get into that. Uh, Take Two has, is now hitting back and saying some pretty bizarre things. And so we're going to get into all that. But what seems to have sparked this entire situation was there was a live stream on the official Borderlands Twitch channel. They did some kind of a, a live stream revealing, uh, revealing some gameplay. I, I'm not 100% certain on what was actually in that live stream. But at one point, they were featuring some of the uh, some features that integrate with Twitch on the live stream. 
And what appears the situation is, is that Take Two or Gearbox or whoever's running the, this, they, they obviously have some Twitch accounts that they're using to test these integrations. Mm -hmm. I don't exactly know what they do, but somehow you're able to integrate, you know, so while you're watching on Twitch or streaming the game on Twitch or something, you can interact with the game can interact with Twitch somehow. And so they're testing these yeah, things. It's, 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 a, it's a cool system. It's a really cool. Yeah. Feature, yes. Yeah. So yeah, the, uh, Kazra Azad said it was the flak gameplay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that sounds familiar. Um, and that is, that is, Oh, by the way, uh, most of the copyright strikes went away on Matto's channel. And we don't know why. He doesn't know why. He doesn't know if YouTube intervened or if they, uh, you know, if 2, 2K or Take Two, rather, um, you know, retracted them. But one of the things with YouTube is sometimes if they get a whole bunch of copyright takedown requests from the same person at, at the, uh, uh, in a short span of time, they treat that as only one copyright strike, which is kind of nice. In, in some in some cases in some cases, cases i mean they, they they have to manually review everything and whatnot so it might be that youtube just said okay you know you've struck all these videos um we're only treating it as as one strike or or they manually reviewed and decided no he wasn't in violation of copyright whatever the case uh his channel is not going away because you know it only has one copyright strike on it and that'll fall off in three months or so. So there you go. But anyway, so in this Twitch stream, what happened was uh, Take-Two has these testing accounts or Gearbox, like I said, whoever's developing this. They have these testing accounts, which are basically strings of gibberish characters are the account names. You know, makes sense. They don't want people finding these. Um, so one of these account names appeared on the screen during this live stream on the official Borderlands 3 uh, uh, Twitch stream. So, so during that live stream, one mm -hmm. of their testing account usernames appeared on the screen, and it's just this random string of gibberish characters. But a few people decided they're going to follow that account. Why the heck not? I mean, as, as far as they knew at this point... Maybe it was even intentional. Maybe it was some kind of ARG they were playing. Yeah, like, because that's been really popular recently. That's been very popular. And and this is something also the Gearbox has been doing. You know? Yes, in, Gearbox in, hid hidden messages in several of the more recent trailers. And the official trailer. There was a couple of... Yeah, uh, there was Morse code trailer, and there was like other... Over, yeah. Yeah. So, so anyway, this... All kinds of stuff. So they followed this account. They found that it was linked to a bunch of other accounts that were just random strings of character. So Because they were following each other. They were following each other. So, and this is... By the way, this is not all Submato discovering this stuff. It was a bunch of people in the Borderlands community. And so... Mm -hmm. On they, Reddit, lots of people discovered this before Submato did and before Submato started reporting on it. Exactly. It was on the Reddit, Reddit everywhere. So they were following these accounts and... One day, one of them goes live, and uh, and so they, you know, they they go and start watching it, and it's a private stream, and I'll get into that in a sec what that entails. Um, but actually, I'll, I'll get into that now. So I did some testing and some research earlier today. You can't do a private stream on Twitch. It's just unless unless Take Two has some kind of special feature that Twitch only gives to big corporations for testing or something like that, you can't actually do a private stream. You can do a subscriber-only stream, and I tested it today. And what Matto has claimed about this is that, um, you know, the screenshots that he took from these private test streams were public. Yes, the streams were private, but when you go to the streaming page, there are screenshots that appear, little previews. And it, you know, there's a little window on the screen that says, you know, uh, so and so is streaming for subscribers, subscribers only. But there's a little preview of what's going on in the stream right there on the screen. And I can prove this to you because I ran tests today. And if you are watching on YouTube, check it out right now. You can see right there on the screen, I've got uh, this is a screenshot from my test screen. I went to a browser where I was not signed into Twitch at all. 
and tried to watch my own uh, private or subscriber-only Twitch stream, and this is what came up. Triple S League is streaming for subscribers. There's a little preview screenshot. You can see the blurry version in the background there, and there's the little a clearer version that's much smaller, just kind of in the middle there. And it updates every few minutes. Here's the second one. You can see it's just our logo on there. Um, so I refreshed the page, and after refreshing it a bunch of times, it was a different screenshot. Here's number three. So basically, um, this essentially <laughs> proves that he he is not lying, or at least this is possible on Twitch, that you, you have some kind of a private stream or a subscriber-only stream. Yes, you can still grab screenshots from it. And that's what they were doing. Uh, I don't know if it was Matto himself or if it was other people from the community, but they were going in, grabbing these screenshots, and then trying to glean whatever information uh, they can from them. But here's something that's even... And I don't know how relevant this is, but uh, you'll see there's that little purple button on there that says, uh, you know, sign up now to get a preview. So I did that in a different browser. I logged in to my to another Twitch account while watching the subscriber-only stream, and even though I'm not subscribed to it, I was able to watch it for a little while. So, if they're, if you hear Take-Two talking about how they've got, they had some locked-down private stream, and that Matto had to somehow data mine or hack in in order to watch it, that is bull. That is absolute bullshizno unless they can provide some serious evidence that that's the case, that's crap. And, and that is what they're claiming, by the way. Spoiler. That is what they're claiming. That it's crappity crap, crap, crap. It's... It, it, the, 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 reasons, the reasoning is complete uh, horse. Um, yeah. The other thing that, they, that they've claimed is that um, Somato was profiting off of breaking their TOS. But... Matto's never signed their TOS or had an NDA or had any kind of official thing. So it was just the TS uh, terms of service that you click on when you play the game. Yeah. Well, anybody who, like, it, th there's nothing that I am aware of aside from um, making videos or using it as a, as a system in which to then make content, then to sell that content to other people. And they have a rule when it comes to YouTube, and it's pretty open. It's it's pretty standard. So there, hmm. none none of what he did is in in violation of their TOS, unless somebody can point that out to me. Um, just had somebody run through it today and go, uh, unless he was doing something that was on his channel or that was through another format through some other like company or something. That, there's nothing here that is currently they they don't have a leg to stand on when it comes to this. The, the only, only thing, thing that they have, sorry, the only ahead. thing that they have, yes, the only thing that they have a leg to stand on is the um, pre-release screenshots, which were running on the Twitch feeds. Which, mm -hmm. if, again, if you if you have a really good lawyer, you might be able to argue that that's somehow their fault. But in most cases, that's going to be laughed out of court because it was it was a public system that you're using that anybody can access that anybody could follow that you leaked on your own stream. Yeah. It is It is absolutely not anything that was brute forced, hacked, or contorted to give access to somebody else. And, and again, for the people out there who, who claim otherwise, it's like you really need to take mm -hmm. a minute. And, and yeah, just... like there, I've seen so many messages of people saying, oh, he violated NDA. He did something illegal. He did this, this, yeah, He this. never signed, as no. far as we know, as far as we know, he's never signed an NDA. Um, and and he's not an idiot. Uh, whenever, whenever we sign NDAs, uh, my last NDA signing was like several years ago. And this is why the other reason why we're talking about this is because they, they've been trying to figure out how, you know, how I get my info. Um, I, I do not leak anything to anybody that I have signed an NDA for. There is there is nothing. I don't even tell Ash here what I've seen on NDAs. Um, and those are all pretty old. Uh, and all of those games are actually released. Um, but I've been in the industry for a while, and I have contacts. And nothing that I put out is 
straight up illegal or have I been directly told not to put out? Um, right. By so way, uh, so Niv- this, this is this is really ridiculous. It is absolutely. And Niv Ozzy, uh, that is a fantastic idea. And I think I'm going to I'm going to clip this out as its own video and maybe edit it to be really streamlined and then you guys can share it around. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So anyway, um, so that's that's sort of the situation. And now, like I said, um, 2K is hitting back. Um, a couple of mainstream news outlets have covered this. IGN has covered it. Um, the Verge. I don't really know how mainstream they are, but anyway, a couple. It's starting to pick up steam in in the press, and uh, so IGN has put out a con- statement. How convenient! How convenient that the press is uh, is directed uh, what to say, how to say, and where to say it, and they follow suit. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I mean. Some of the coverage I've seen has seems balanced. Some of it, not so much. Um, but anyway, 2K, or sorry, Take Two. Man, those, those names are so similar. What were they thinking? Um, basically, they put out a statement. That's mostly what we're going to be focusing on here. Um, but anyway, from the IGN article covering this, 2K Games and Take Two, the parent company of 2K, as well as Rockstar and Private Division, have indeed been investigating Submatto's Borderlands 3 videos as part of a wider investigation into ongoing Borderlands 3 leaks. They then quote Matto's statement about him believing he has nothing to hide, which is from his video that he put out yesterday morning. But then the article continues, However, our investigation revealed a complicated 10-month investigation initiated by 2K and Take Two, into prominent Borderlands 3 leaks. Now, that's um, that's some vague language. They say a 10-month indiv- investigation initiated into prominent Borderlands 3 leaks. They don't specify that the investigation was into Submato, but that seems to be what they're trying to imply. Um, 2K's actual uh, statement is as follows. Take 2 and 2K take the security and confidentiality of trade secrets very seriously. The action we've taken is the result of a 10-month investigation and a history of this creator profiting from breaking our policies, leaking confidential information about our product, and infringing our copyright. Now let's take those one at a time. A history, and so they're referring presumably to Submato here. And they're claiming that there's been a 10-month investigation that has been focused on him, or at at least that he's been part of it in some way. And they say he's got a history of cre- of profiting from breaking our policies. What policies? Which this is going to be serious question hour for for Take Two to answer if we're going to give this claim any kind of credibility. What policies? And if, even if like as people have been rightly and obviously pointing out in the chat because you're a smart bunch here, um, he doesn't work for you. Like, what policies are we talking about? And how was he profiting from them? He's mm-hmm. He was putting out... Yeah, he was profiting from his YouTube channel, but uh, is there evidence that he did anything underhanded? That he stole something? Or, like, what... what? Okay, this the, is such only, a vague the, statement. The only... The only so there's, there's, there's been a lot of leaks and a lot of, like, info to come out. And some of it has been really obvious. And basically you could guess that from, from there's a lot of stuff that was guessable. Uh, not, not like, not like, not like, you know, get a thousand people to make a thousand guesses, like get 10 people to make an educated guess. And pretty much nine out of 10 of them would agree on one particular thing. And that's what they ended up doing. I, I'll give you a quick example. The, um, the soldier uh, type character. In the last two games, a male soldier. Well, it's time for a female. It's not that hard to figure out. It's really not that hard to figure out. So Right, but I don't think he was necessarily making guesses and putting them out as facts. Um, he was doing a lot of speculation, and speculation is what we do here for some stuff. Um, and and for a lot of stuff that Submato was doing, there was a lot of speculation that was leading to things one way or the other. So they were mm-hmm. basically working. In any case, um, this this statement, uh, it was he was profiting can you, can from you breaking up. Uh, 
Can you read these super chat real quick? Super. Oh, thank you. Agent Dave or Agent Dav, been watching you for a long time and finally decided to donate. I really appreciate the great work you do. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Uh, we, we are so glad that, you know, people appreciate this content that we do, especially after a day like today where we've just been drowning in all of this info, which isn't a lot of fun to sort through. Uh, so so we're, we're glad that, that you appreciate this. Thank you very much. All right. Um, so... A uh, history of this creator profiting from breaking our policies. That's incredibly vague. I'd like to know what policies he was breaking and how he was subject to them if he hadn't signed anything and wasn't working for you. That's my question. Um, leaking confidential information about our product. Well, how did he get that information? First of all, this is not. This is far from illegal. This is if it's confidential within your corporation. Uh, if it's not like government secrets or something, it's not illegal to share quote-unquote, confidential information. It might get you blacklisted by a game company, but it's not illegal. Secondly, how did he get this information? Was it, say, by f pulling the threads of information that were found on a public live stream? I'll just let that one sit, because we've already kind of uh, covered that. And then uh, infringing our copyright. Now, this is the one where they might have a leg to stand on. I mean, yes, anything Borderlands related is uh, subject to their copyright. But there's a channel for this, and it's called, of course, um, uh, it's it's called doing a DMCA takedown or or going through the YouTube copyright system to claim your content. But this is clearly not. <laughs> this, n they're, they were they were investigating leaks. They weren't investigating copyright infringement. That is that is not the intention behind their investigation at all. That becomes very clear when you read their entire statement. Mm -hmm. This wasn't about copyright. Now, it may be technically, technically they maybe had, you know, that may have been what they were able to use to get some of his videos taken down, because technically, yeah, anything Borderlands related, they own. But yeah, if they then why didn't they take down all of his videos? It's all Borderlands stuff. Because they were only worried about leaks. That That's that's the bottom line there. It wasn't about copyright. It was about leaks. So, anyway, that's the one where they do have a legal uh, a, a leg to stand on. But, again, that, that seems to be more of a technicality than anything else. Continuing... The IGN article goes on to say 2K alleged that Submato's leaks into Borderlands 3 goes far beyond just the Twitch extension, which we've already talked about. Submato's YouTube channel has published videos dating back to 2018 with information on Borderlands 3, including accurate details on characters and mechanics months ahead of Borderlands 3's official reveal. Uh, by the way... <laughs> I, I I actually read that as it's written, Borderland Threes. Uh, a mm -hmm. little typo there. Sorry, I, that's not important. Everyone makes typos, um, but yeah. So he he put out accurate information about Borderlands Three before the game was revealed. Saib, I guess he must be guilty of something nefarious. Yeah, like pretty much every other news, and I mean hell. Uh, somebody just ran a whole bunch of info on the, the bully leak. Uh, gee, I wonder who who that was. <laughs> Did they get thugs? Did Walmart Canada get private investigators showing up to their uh, to their door? No, before? because because this would never fly with a corporation. Um, you know, they call each other up and be like, hey, you know, and they sort things out. Um, and the same like the same thing you know happens with good companies who understand their fan base. You know, we have connections, official connections within within uh, CDPR, and um, there are things that we don't talk about and don't release because it's been asked, "Hey, don't talk about that." Okie dokies. Yeah, including out of, the out of matter respect, situation. Like we, we out, he asked us not to to share too much, and and we didn't, out of respect for what what he asked, even though we really really wanted to because we wanted to have the kind of media attention on it that it is getting right now. But anyway. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, final quote from the IGN article here. By the way, I love this. Uh, <laughs> Darkness in the chat has a great summary of the IGN article. 
Uh, Take Two has a policy of we do whatever the hell we want, peasant. Submato was in clear violation of it. I love that. Uh, okay. Uh, IGN goes on to say, in our discussions with 2K, we've learned that the Twitch streams Supmato used as sources were set to private, not public, as Supmato claims. Sidebar. This is... Why can't these org outlets do their homework? Mm -hmm. He never claimed that the the Twitch streams that he used were pu were public. He said that the Twitch they stream private. where they revealed... That was the point. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, he used screenshots from uh, streams that they attempted to make private, but Twitch's architecture just isn't set up that way. Like, it shows screenshots, even when you've privated the stream. So, so what's the point? He never And secondly, he never claimed that they were public. He said that the, uh, the stream where they, uh, where they revealed one of the usernames for the other Twitch channels uh, was public, and it was. There were over 100,000 people watching it live. So so this is garbage. This is just garbage reporting right here. Um, <laughs> this next sentence is just golden. We were told that it was an exploit in Twitch's security that allowed Submato's community to data mine their way into getting access to the thumbnail previews on what were private test streams. Okay. Show us evidence that they had access to some sort of private stream that no that nobody else gets access to. I, I searched far and wide on the internet. Can you do a private stream on Twitch? No, you can't. No, you can't. No, you can't. Everywhere. Recently, in 2019, they rolled out this subscriber-only stream feature. Now, is it possible they have a special tool for corporations to test these Twitch integrations? Maybe. I'd like to see evidence of that, and I'd also like to see that they don't work the same way that the subscriber-only streams work, because if they're set up the same way, where they show the screenshots publicly, as I showed you in screenshots in this very podcast, that's what happens. So, uh, cut out this bullshizno, IGN. This is, this is crap. Do your freaking homework. This is starting up, or or just or just do your job. You know, you could start. You could, you could start with doing your job. That game, would be nice. Game journalists. There are good game journalists. I'm sure. Very somewhere. few and far between. I can't think of them off the top of my head, but man, this is so such garbage. Okay, um, so then they they say that this puts Submato's claims in his Borderland Three video into question, which is not true because they didn't even represent what he said in his video accurately. So this is garbage. And I'm not going to waste any more time on it. Uh, but that's the situation. What it looks like is that Take-Two isn't happy that their community, the, their fans are smart and follow the threads. And I guess they just don't understand what the internet is about. Because that's what we do in this community. And that's why... Companies like CD Projekt Red put out these these ARGs, alternate reality games, where we, we they they hide secret codes that we try to de decode and follow the follow the threads and 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 especially when Gearbox has done this themselves. I mean, what else is there to say? This is what we do. We'll we'll find every tidbit of information. How was he supposed to know? How was the community supposed to know that they weren't supposed to find these test streams? Like, was there some kind of a notice that popped up that said, you know, uh, if you're watching this, you're in violation of uh, section XYZ of our whatever code. And even if it did, um, you know, <laughs> unless they had signed something, uh, that's that's. Or if, if there was some warning, oh, uh, you know, if, if you share, if you. If you find these public uh, screenshots and share them, uh, you know we will take you down with a copyright strike. But that they went far beyond that. They did copyright strikes. They sent goons to his home. They took down his Discord server. And you know basically engaged in this intimidation campaign. This is utterly ridiculous. It's a symptom of a larger problem <laughs> in the gaming community of uh, these large corporations just having absolute disdain 
and just not understanding their customer base. Because this is what we do. We dig for clues, we pull the threads, and it's their own damn fault that they let some screenshots go public. They should have made a joke about it, or just said oops, or just left it alone. Or said we meant to do that. But no, they're, they're, they're going to do this, they're going to try to destroy the livelihood of a very, uh, of an excellent YouTuber. And all, all for the sake of, they're putting this information that, that leaked out, they're putting this information out tomorrow. So, <laughs> it's a week? It's about a week? Really? Hmm, a week. Okay, good job, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, again, I cannot emphasize this enough. We stood up for them. We said, don't judge them based on random accusations. Hear them out and hear the, you know, the evidence out. And we don't even get the same treatment. We don't even get a, a, a moniker of the same treatment. Because it's not about, you know, w what this is really about is about controlling the narrative absolutely. And not allowing some, you know, silly and or stupid, uh, uh, you know, person who says what they want to say uh, have, a, have a mic piece. We have to remove it. We have to destroy it. We have to not allow it. It's like, wow. Good job, guys. That yeah, is... what, what did they gain from this, really? A bunch of bad faith from, from the community. Or yep. bad feelings. <clears throat> uh, they've shown... By the way, this is not... Well, I think you mentioned earlier. This is not the first time they have sent hired investigators to the homes. And that's mm -hmm. just disgusting. Going to a man's home. Putting him on edge. Putting him on the defensive. That is disgusting behavior. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, it is. It is not good. It is you not could, good. Yeah, you could send an email. You can send. You there. You can email. You could talk to him on Discord. You could do copyright takedown strikes. You can do all this. That there's appropriate ways of doing this. Sending thugs to question him. That's just intimidation. And anyway, unless they can come back with some serious evidence of that what they're accusing him of is true. We are officially on the hashtag Boycott Borderlands 3 bandwagon. Uh, actually, it goes beyond that. All Take-Two properties are just no longer of interest to us at this channel. So there you go. Um, the one exception being the Outer Worlds, mostly, and, and uh, we, we discussed this at length, and uh, because it is more under the Microsoft umbrella now, uh, you know, Obsidian is owned by Microsoft, and Obsidian owns the Outer Worlds IP. And, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, we will, we are planning to cover the Outer Worlds. Outside of that, um, we are reluctant to touch anything that has had any contact with Take-Two. All right. So, we will um, move on from there. And uh, I do like the idea of, of making uh, this a, a separate video, so I'm going to try and get up bright and early in the morning and do that and have that out for all of you guys to share around. Uh, I'll cut it down. I mean, we've been going for 48 minutes thus far. I'll cut it down as, as short as I can. Uh, not as short as I can, but I'll cut out some of the tangents and stuff and try to tighten it up. All right, you are listening to the Augmented Reality Broadcast, and we... Really appreciate seeing all of you so active in the live chat. If you want to see, keep the conversation going after the live broadcast, we welcome you to join our Discord community. You can find the link in the description below. It's a place where you can chat with us and other Triple S fans about all the things we love to talk about and stay up to date about everything we're doing here at the Triple S League. Click the link below to join and be sure to say hi to us in the welcome channel. All right. Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, some fun new info. We have a new screenshot put out by, uh, by um, CDPR. CD Project Red. Sorry, just rebooting into happy mode now that we're done all of that disgusting stuff. Uh, so I'm going to show you the. You can see it in the thumbnail in the podcast image there today. But here's the full thumbnail that they put out. And what we've got here is we have got Sasquatch, the leader of the Animals Gang, busting through some kind of a sign or wall with her massive rocket hammer uh, and of course our player uh, from the first person perspective is shooting back at her so this is a boss fight basically and mm -hmm. uh, I've been trying to figure out what this said before it got broken the sign here the glowing red letters 
don't know. Uh, I, I, I don't know what it might have said, but anyway, this is really cool because this, this, uh, I'm, I'm just going to zoom it in a little bit here for you all. Uh, it just showcases some more of the art of the game. Looks really fantastic. We get to see uh, Sasquatch up close. And uh, the, the weapon looks pretty awesome as well. Uh, there's some writing on it. And I don't know what it says. Somebody zoomed in on it, but I can't remember what it says. And uh, also this is showcasing uh, some kind of a destructible environment. And we've talked about this. Uh, yeah, this looks like a leak, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh leak leak on the image uh oh yeah it looks like it could say leak now <clears throat> that's what someone in the chat is pointing it out pointing out leak now <laughs> time bean says she wants me i know it i'll bet she does she wants to rocket hammer you good all right so death by snoo snoo oh maybe it says leap now that's right leap now and go buy the pre-order Thank you, double asterisks. Uh, time being, something is leaking. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> something is leaking. <laughs> Please don't elaborate. Um, but yeah, so... Really awesome looking image. Now, what does this tell... Does this tell us anything about... Destructible environments in the game? We've talked about this before. How that was... You know, we know that... Um, destructible they, they environments huge, were in the plan... Yeah. They have a huge destructible environment system set up. Unfortunately, the um, it's very taxing on the engine and whatever system is running it. Um, they have uh, a lot of destructible windows, a lot of destructible uh, walls, and some other stuff. But it it, it is a significantly um, heavy system to operate. Um, this is a quick example. Fallout Four has a lot of uh, ability to be completely destructive. Um, but that system is so power hungry that you need a computer that's easily twice to three times stronger than what the game was designed for, yeah, uh, in order yeah. to have with in order to turn on mods that feature that kind of uh, that kind of tech. It's it's just and you need to you know do a bunch of stuff with the script and and a bunch of other things. It's just um, it's just a lot of info uh, and you know. Yeah, this, this it's, it's a lot around, of processing power. This has power, been around yeah. as, a, as a goal uh, in a lot of games for a really long time, um, and I suspect that we're not going to really see it fully realized until quite well into the next uh, gen, well into the next gen. Right. Probably even the, the next gen after that. It's just because you, you have so much fidelity that you can do that take up so many resources before you can start turning on the, basically like, you know, the icing on the cake. Um, and we basically run a system where we basically sit right in front of the, we, we basically sit as, as developers, we're sitting right in front of the, you know, oh my goodness, we're going to make this crash and burn because we're, we're demanding too much from the system in order to run this game. And we've been running that system for a really long time. And it's only games like, you know, like Minecraft and all the other, like kind of retro retro graphics games that that really can push the boundaries of some concepts and really bring in some amazing new tech because they're not making the they're not dive um they're not devoting 80 percent of the engine and the the console and the machine to just running graphics you know and that's where you have some really really interesting new content being created so yeah this doesn't really tell us anything new aside from the fact that we will have one or two uh spots where the destructible environment is always on um you know right, like yeah. the video that we saw in the one trailer and and we're going to see some more of that i i don't think we're going to get fully destructible environments um not yet and and i and as much as everybody fans and fawns and goes crazy over the concept crackdown 3 really didn't do well and it was based on that whole concept it's fun for like 15 minutes, which unfortunately is about the time that people get their hands on it when they go to these E3 shows. So for the last like 15, 20 years, we've been chasing a lot of stuff that looks great in a 15 minute demo and has absolutely no solid like viability past that concept. So mm. hmm. yeah, interesting. Take, take that, take that how you want it. <laughs> But yeah, it does make sense that they would have certain areas or certain structures that are destructible, but 
they might be pre-rendered or not pre-rendered but they might be preset animations they might be pre-scripted to fall apart in a certain way and only happen at certain times so having a truly dynamic destructible environment where you can literally shoot the corner off of any anything that you come across uh that would be that would require massive processing power all right so yeah very cool image uh, i'm just going to put the other image back up here you can still see it there uh time bean can still gaze longingly into uh, sasquatch's eyes there all right we've got a couple more things to go through uh some new uh some new info this was just an interesting uh, quote here uh, an article from Respawn First, um, just talking about Mike Pondsmith's vision for the game, and uh, it says here, according to Marcin Blaksha, uh, sorry, I didn't look up the pronunciation of this name before I started here, I probably butchered that horribly, but anyway, he's the story director of Cyberpunk 2077, um, he says, the upcoming AAA RPG is not an extension of our world in 2077. She, my apologies, she, Marcin, explained uh, that it is Mike Pondsmith's vision of what the future might look like. Um, I'm going to read the quote here. Cyberpunk 2077 is not an extension of our world in 2077. It's a vision of the future as Mike Pondsmith and society in general expected the future to look like in the 80s. In this sense, we're not modernizing the tabletop source material at all. What we are doing is developing those expectations and transgressing twists from our reality here and there. So, true retrofuturism. This is also this is also what the Fallout series did. Uh, you know, they took uh, they took sort of 1950s ideas of what the future was going to look like and turn that into the the future that the Fallout series was set in. Uh, interestingly enough, the Great War in Fallout uh, was in 2077, was it not? Or am I completely off there? Anyway. Um, a good example of this, however down-to-earth it may sound, is how we perceive the internet today. It's wireless, right? They didn't have that back in the day, so Cyberpunk 2077 is still mostly wired, full of dark subnets and places you need physical access to jack in. There's the black wall and what's beyond it does resemble our current web, but again, it's not exactly our world. So, nothing really surprising there, but I thought I really liked that quote, and I really liked mm -hmm. how she explained it, so I wanted to share that. Yeah, we covered that. We covered this in the uh, in the lore breakdown that we put out uh, from the Cyberpunk Red. It's basically like hard connections. Uh, wireless stuff is extremely limited in range. It's it it like you have to be feet away from something in order to hack it. Uh, you know, uh, from where you're at, and even then, it, it you know a T bug. We see T bug do it in the um, in the latest trailer. Uh, that they put out kind of the story trailer. Um, you have to be in basically the same room a couple of feet away. And even then, it's only really good for kind of like brute forcing or overloading some some stuff. So yeah, it's it's basically like that. Everything else is wired. Um, <clears throat> and the there's so many connections to old systems that the old net is still basically running rampant. And that the new net that they're trying to rebuild and they're trying to like you know, create it off the system anytime just one hard line gets con connected in with another hard line from the old net, it's just, it creates a mess and it, it just continues to, to go crazy. So you'd have, you, you basically have to shut down everything, destroy pretty much everything, get rid of absolutely every hard connection there possibly is, um, which is almost impossible because I, I, I can tell you right now that, um, that, that, that just does, that system just doesn't work. Uh, there are ways and formats that you can do that you can set up that you can try to do that, but it's just not going to work. Um, in, in today's, we're talking like in today's technology, you can't get rid of all of the hard systems because you don't even know where some of those hard systems are. They're that old and they're that interconnected within the system. Um, and this is in today's world. It's, it's, it's insane. It's crazy. But anyway, sorry, I digress. Yeah, no, that's fine. Oh, and I was right, apparently. The Great War in <clears throat> Fallout lore started and ended on October 23rd, 
2077. Thank you, Terror K. Mm -hmm. uh, I do know things, yay. Uh, uh, Kazra Azad says, Ash, it's a he. I don't know, the, the article I was reading uh, refers wait, to wait, this. Wait, 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 wait. So you're talking about Marcin? Marcin, not Iwinski. Yeah, that's a he. Not Iwinski. Yeah, okay, but it says she here. She explained well, that, that that could be that could be a typo. That might be a mistake. I I'm just I was just reading what the article was saying. But anyway, my apologies for that blatant misgendering. I will flog myself later. All right. Um, no, no, Mar Marcin Iwinski is is the um, uh, he's 45, uh, kind of little salt and pepper pear. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's 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 the main dude. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, yeah Marcin. That's, that's, this yeah. was a different Marcin. Mm, no, the Marcin Winsky is the one doing the this. Part, you're reading from the. Um, no, yeah, the oh. interview is Marcin Winsky. The other article, yeah. what the other quote I read was a different Marcin. Oh, okay. Let's just make that clear. That was referred to as a she. Yeah. Okay. In the article. We're with you now. We're with you now. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, let's just get on with this. Uh, so we have... Um, oh, wait a second. Before we get into that, uh, uh, Cyberpunk 2077 does have a new game plus mode in the works. Mm -hmm. This is being reported by uh, Games Radar. It may not reporting be out on at a, launch. Yeah, yeah. So it might not be out at launch, but uh, they are apparently working on it. No real indication on on any details about it but anyway so yeah so there will be a, a new game plus mode so you, you know those are really popular add in uh, extra stuff or start off restart the game with your existing skills and i actually i really like that idea just because you know one of the things that that kind of makes me hesitate to replay an rpg is having to start way at the beginning again Especially if it's things like your running speed or, or whatnot that are like really slow, um, or can't jump as high. I don't know. Feels like, feels like you're putting the training wheels back on, kind of. So yeah, I like that. I like the uh, the idea of being able to sort of start or restart where you're at, or, or at least have kind of a bit of a jump on it on it, and not having to start right from the absolute beginning again. Okay, and the China Joy 2019 conference uh, happened in China this past weekend, and lots of major game developers were there, including uh, the CEO of CD Projekt Red Development Camp, <laughs> Marcin Uh This is being um, this is being reported by Game Fever, and it's being translated from a foreign language. I don't even know what language it is, but it's uh, it's from. Uh, an Asian country. Uh, and so some of the wording in this article is hilarious just because it's been translated. So anyway, China Joy 2019 conference. And uh, one of the notable developer... <laughs> one of the notable developers will not escape the CD Projekt Red, the creator of memorable works. Oh, that's funny. Anyway, Marcy Nowinski gave an interview at, uh, at this, and we're just going to go through some of the questions and answers and uh, commentate on them uh, to close out the show today. So, so one of the questions was about vehicles. So he was asked, uh, inside demos have shown many vehicles, including public vehicles that the players can use. We know the game has a driving system. We want to know if you can hack into these vehicles, such as a bus or helicopter. And Marcin responds, as seen in the demo, we have many public vehicles, um, including many types of vehicles that players can control, uh, but there are there's a lot of thing there's a lot of things to see here. I think is what he's trying to say, uh, inviting the players to explore the world on foot. But in the cases of public vehicles such as buses or helicopters, players may not be able to directly interact with those. But there will be times when you have the opportunity to ride in them, and of course there are many travel options for the players to choose from. So it's not going to be a GTA where you can just take any vehicle you want or jack any vehicle you want. Drive a bus, drive a bike, drive a garbage truck. That's not what it's going to be. So, so there you go. All right. Um, then a question about realism in the games. Um, 
As developers have tried to demonstrate in the past, Cyberpunk 2077 will give players the freedom to choose a way to get realistic content. I think they're talking about playing in different ways. Um, but sometimes realism can cause difficulties as well in the Rockstar Camp of Red Dead Redemption 2, which is often blamed on the difficulty of caring for horses. Uh, so... Having to care for your horses in Red Dead Redemption 2 is apparently a pain in the butt. Uh, we want to know, will there be realistic elements that create difficulties for players like this? And Marcin uh, responds, first of all, we understand uh, it's not trying to be... Sometimes real life is quite boring, he says, uh, so um, we make it more fun like in action movies. But of course, there may be some elements of the game that create difficulty for players like in the game The Witcher 3 as well, but these elements are important in making the world feel alive. Of course, we focus on creating realistic feelings to attract players, but in the end, you have to add some fun to the game. So, yeah, you know, it's... it's And that's, that's a really good place to be at with this, because w what we have here is, you know, he's, he's reiterating again that they're trying to make this game, first and foremost, fun. Um... Red Dead and several other games, uh, just really not, you know, by incorporating too much um, realism in, in some ways, <clears throat> kind of runs, kind of runs into a boring game after you get through it the first time. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, it's not, it's not, um, it's not a good move to try and copy that too much in trying to like continually say what is fun about this how can we make this more fun how can we make this more dynamic how can we t take this and lead it into something better that that's constantly a question that you have to face and i think here we have a we have a really good direction from the company and the company is headed um is, is following this like a bloodhound and is 100 percent awesome mm -hmm. and he closes out he goes on and talks a little bit more about it here but he closes out by saying finally we want to emphasize that even though the game world is an action movie that does not mean you have to blow up mountains and burn the cottages all the time. Many players like to drive motorcycles on the street at night, which mm -hmm. is not wrong as well. So basically, you know, you can just go around and live in this world. You'll just enjoy being in the world. And quite frankly, I'm 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 stoked for it, especially Night City at night. I loved mm -hmm. one of my favorite levels from the original Deus Ex was the Tokyo level. And, yep. uh, you know, it's you're, Tokyo at night. And, man, you were you were so limited. I mean, it's such an old game. But you really mm -hmm. felt... Somehow, you just felt like you were in this massive futuristic city. Yep. And uh, the, way, the way they'll be able to do that with Night City in this game, of course, is going to be way beyond that. So I'm, I'm absolutely stoked for it. All right. The, he was then asked, um, will it have deep mini-games like Gwent? And... Marcin replies, we will definitely have a lot of mini games to play, such as for hacking, etc. We've talked about this before. There's going to be hacking. There's, of course, going to be um, street racing and target shooting, that kind of a thing. There's probably going to be a lot of other things as well that we're not that we don't know about. But he says they there won't be any games as deep or serious as Gwent. So um, that sounds like this cyberpunk card game that is going to be coming out is not actually going to be incorporated into cyberpunk 2077 or at least not at launch well we know it's uh i guess we can't say we know it won't be there at launch because it comes out after cyberpunk 2077 i mean maybe down the road they'll they'll incorporate it somehow mm -hmm. if it fits you know if it fits the lore of the game to have this game within the game uh, that was a sentence I just said. Hope it made sense. Anyway, uh, in the game Cyberpunk 2077, will there be any other stars other than Keanu Reeves? Marcin <laughs> replied, I don't know. And then it says lollipop in parentheses. Is this like a Chinese thing I'm not familiar with? Was he like sucking on a lollipop while he was giving the interview? That seems unprofessional. No, no, there's also the lollipop that you do with your thumb. Okay, what the, is the it? sound? The thing? Oh, the, you do it at clubs and stuff, or so I'm told at least. I I, 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 I haven't been to club in ages. Uh, yes. It's like 
I don't, I don't have a life. Like three days. <laughs> <laughs> it's been ages. It's been like since Tuesday. Uh, the cyberspace. Okay, so then they were asked uh, the cyberspace section shown at the end of the demo. Will it be a place for players to explore? This is when you net hack and you go into the the virtual world. Um, in addition, we can see that V will have to ha rely on the help of other people to enter cyberspace. Uh, we want to know that players will be able to develop the ability of V to enter cyberspace on their own or not. So will you be able to enter cyberspace, cyberspace on your own? Will you always require help from other characters? And can you just go in and explore it? And Marcin Winsky says, uh, cyberspace is one of my favorite elements in this game. I don't really want to reveal anything about it because it is an empty spoiler. Um, empty spoiler? I don't know what that means. But anyway, he doesn't want to spoil anything. But uh, if you want to know more about it, you have to find it yourself in the game. That's basically his response. All right. Um, he's asked about customizable backgrounds. And we I'm going to skip that one because we've talked it to death, I feel. Um, Media then asks, in the open world style... Of, in the open world game style, often it's designed to allow players to play additional missions to collect levels, otherwise you cannot pass the main story mission, etc. So leveling up to be powerful enough for the main quest, that kind of a thing. If players play a lot of additional missions when returning to play the, the central mission, will the story be leveled up? And Marcin says it's interchangeable. You can play the game only with the main story, or you can... Uh, you know, you can do the side quests as well. And we've talked recently about how the side quests are going to influence the game, and they're actually going to influence the ending of the game, potentially. The status of your side quests might actually affect the ending that you get. So, uh, you you can... And we've been talking forever about how you can do basically whatever you want. Like, there's... You can skip quests. You don't even have to play the main central story if you don't want to. You can just go around and do whatever in the world. Whatever you want. Alright. So, I'm going to skip that one as well. Uh, the next one says, will there be a multiplayer system? And uh, Marcin replies, as previously mentioned on this issue, we have a department that is researching and developing a multiplayer mode, but this mode is not an important, not an important point for us because Cyberpunk 2077 is the first game created, uh, is firstly created for playing the story. We therefore strive to create the perfect single player experience first. In other matters, it is said that again. Anyway, basically, uh, basically, he's saying they're researching it. Um, but primarily, it's supposed to be a first person, mm -hmm. uh, perspective okay questions about first person and third person going to skip those we've uh, been over those a lot a lot yeah um it doesn't say anything new about it does he i don't think so but regardless i don't see <laughs> i don't think there's any uh um we, we've had some feedback on that issue that we bring it mm -hmm. up too much uh okay yeah. we we want to know the spec of the cpu used to run the demo uh, Marcin says, at this time it is still not possible to provide information about various specs because the game is still in the process of improving the optimization. So, um, but he, he then says, if, if you want to maximize the graphics, go buy a new computer. <laughs> he says, oh, okay, I should read the whole statement. But if, but if I speak in a safe manner, uh, the computer you currently use should be able to play the game, but if you want to adjust the graphics to the max, go buy a new computer. So yeah, there you go. and that he he did say that in somewhat of a joking term. He's not yeah. Being, there was like a he's laugh not being there. condescending. Like... He's not being um, dickish. He's he's simply he he made a joke and it was uh, and it went over pretty well because there was a good laugh with it. So mm -hmm. um, and and really again it's it's it like it totally depends. We don't have specs yet, and we don't know how it works. It's one of these things where some games work really really well for some reason. I can't run anything that uses the arc engine, like the, the, the arc, like survival evolved and like, like all that stuff. I have never been able to run that, that game well on my computer at all. And having gone through various tech 
supports and helps basically it's like ah uh, well basically it's your ram and your graphics card and your motherboard working in tandem just don't function well and can't um can't make the game good at all for your particular system just swap out your motherboard and your ram and then you you'll be good and it's like uh no 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 uh so yeah um but yeah overall this was this was a really good interview uh gave there was nothing groundbreakingly new um but it was really good to see that that they're doing really good over there that they they had a very positive um influence there a lot of a lot of content there uh, a lot of um positive feedback from from the press and the media that was there so yeah um and that's and that's amazing considering how you know that's just one giant mega corporation that you know burns people down so yes overall great showing uh good job on them absolutely really happy with the with the general like feedback and, and interaction so yeah we're, we're good with that all right i think we're done did you have any final thoughts si? um yeah so uh there's gonna be a lot more info coming out about cyberpunk in the next few days or sorry weeks 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 <laughs> in the next few weeks there's gonna be lots of really cool stuff dropping um we're really going to be covering as much of this stuff as we can. Uh, we do have an announcement that we, we have a new thing coming. Uh, we are partnering up with um, one of our community members and we are helping them to launch a channel. Uh, do we have an idea when that video is going to be out live? Oh, sorry. Um, the, uh, the music, the new music. Um, I, I don't know. Once I get around to making a thumbnail for it, basically. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So we will have that out probably this week. Uh, it's been really hectic here with all of the stuff happening. So by all means, you know, just bear with us. Uh, but definitely, like, this is going to be cool. We're really excited for this. We're really uh, happy to showcase this. To be honest, it's quite amazing um, content. And it really fits with what we've been doing for a while now. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Really looking forward to that. Uh, really excited to um, to get that into your hands. The other thing that we, we do want to mention is that there was a change in the algorithm again. Um, their f focus for uh, encouraging people to watch content and to suggest that content and to forward that content out has changed once again. Now this basically boils down to likes. And likes and bell subscriptions what about which comments? is annoying because i i really don't like the the bell i really don't like the bell stuff that they do uh but the thumbs up and that kind of stuff is going to be even more important than ever now um it doesn't even seem that comments are really something that they're pushing at the moment but feel free to continue adding comments but if you're uh, if you're a fan of our content if you enjoy what we do if you want to uh, apparently right now thingy and and sorry that we have to mention this it's really annoying to me to have to mention this stuff i don't i don't enjoy doing the 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 pan, like the you know please help us do this I, i'm not a big fan of that and i feel that content should be you know quite natural but unfortunately that's not what youtube thinks because even when uh there's been a couple tests that people have been running and when they don't mention it at all in the video to like hit the bell hit the like um when it, when the when the person doesn't even say that in the course of the video the video drops like a rock um the interaction the the suggestions the, the feedback just drops like a rock because all they're really interested in right now is those thumbs up the clicks the likes and the stupid bell system which is it's just mental the fact that you have to subscribe then double subscribe then triple subscribe is is beyond me um they really are uh manny you are manny you are 100 percent right they really are damaging constantly changing things that don't need to be chained and so please forgive us for having to to mention this because i don't like doing it it's like yeah i really don't enjoy it uh, our, our biggest video, we didn't even add it in because we didn't feel that it was important. Be, that we felt that people would 
you know, subscribe and, and, and do the thing. Um, the other thing is, is, is hitting the, the join thing and becoming a, a member thing. If you have that, they're really trying to push that. And the bad thing is, is the punishing people who don't. So, you know, by all means do what you want. Um, and, and we, we respect that choice and that, um, option. Um, but if you can, you know, if you really want to help us out, that's currently what, YouTube is demanding and we have to dance with the system a little bit. Right. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, absolutely hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that, that, uh, the, the heart, the follow or the notification bell. That's what it is. Not the heart. Uh, it's a heart on Twitch. That's where I'm getting messed up there. But anyway, thank you all so much for supporting this content. Thank you, agent Dave for the generous super chat. Thank you all of you who've been listening and who are in the uh who've been busily talking in the chat we really appreciate your support we repeat we also appreciate your support for submato and yeah definitely share you know the other videos that are covering it uh go give those a like uh so that they get rolling in the in the algorithm as well uh special th oh and slam that like button before you leave if you haven't done it already we'd really appreciate that and Special thanks to our Patreon supporters and our channel members who help make this content possible. Our big damn heroes on Patreon, Old Man Manson, Sean, and our two anonymous supporters. And also our channel members, Captain Dammit, Jason Cropper, Mr. Padzirdiernik, uh, Jer Schultz, Game Notes, Paul Young, and Night City Punk. Uh, if you're listening after the fact on SoundClouds, iTunes, Spotify, or any of the other platforms that this podcast goes out to, we appreciate your interactions on those platforms as well. And don't forget us to join. Don't forget to join us on the live show on Wednesday nights and Saturday mornings, where you can interact with us and other listeners and be part of the discussion. You can find the exact schedule on our Discord server. The Augmented Reality Podcast is a presentation of the Triple S League. Check out our YouTube channel for game guides, reviews, comedy, news updates, and tons more quality gaming content. My name is Ashton Inity on behalf of Cyb City, and thank you all so much for listening. And we will talk to you again very soon.